Welcome back to the workshop, everybody. So glad you could be with me today. So this is going to be a follow-up to my previous video on sharpening. Well, not everybody thinks that creek stones are the best sharpening method. Well, it could be an opinion, but that wasn't the point. The point is, sharpening is a matter of finding a regiment that works for you. It works for the majority of your needs. If all you have to do is plane the edge of a door to fit it in an opening so that somebody can put some paint on it, planing is not rocket science. You could go out and take your blade to the concrete and sharpen it and bring it back in. Yes, yes, you can. So, what I did was took this blade, which I sharpened on a similar stone. This happens to be a bigger one. And then I took it to one of these. That is an Arkansas stone. It's an antique Arkansas stone that was probably soaked in oil over the years. It ha had been dropped. It had chips. I flattened it. First starting with uh, sandpaper and eventually ended up with my 180 grit diamond. In reality, the blade does not cut significantly, significantly better than when I used the creek stone. So, what does that mean? Well, what it means is that all you need to do is keep sharpening. If you're using sandpaper, raise your level of sharpening to a little bit higher grid of paper. Instead of stopping at 280 or 240, 220, take it up to 320. Take it up to 400, take it up to 600, take it up to 1,000. But only when the effort demands it. Not every plane needs to be sharpened to 16,000 grit or to 30,000 grit, point zero, well not point zero, but 0 0.5 micron. Some do. You're working with some very difficult woods and you need to take minute shavings off to get that beautiful polished edge. But if you're working in tulip poplar, like I am here, which might get painted, this is doing just fine. Now, 
as to the type of stone. Where I live, we have predominantly shale. Shale stone is a sedimentary stone that clay and mud and sand are suspended in water and then they settle and they layer on top of each other. And over the years they become compressed and this is what you end up with. Okay? It's a sediment, sed, sedimentary stone. And this happens to be one layer. So there is mud in there, there is clay in there, there are other grits in there, there are other impurities in there, it's not a perfect stone. But if it's all I had, the demonstration was to simply say, I can sharpen on it. So, many of the natural stones that they find in Japan, and I would venture to say around the world, you will find very fine particle sand mixed with clay that has created stone. And when you add water to it, the clay breaks down and releases the sand. And that's what gives you the sharpening. The real valuable ones are those that are so even through and through that they're almost as if they were, um, well, probably shouldn't say man-made, but the man-made ones are so even that they are like some of these very valuable blue uh, sharpening stones from Japan and other regions. Every region has their own. Arkansas has the Arkansas stone, soft, medium, hard, black, translucent, all different types. Then there's in Italy, they have a stone that has been revered for years to sharpen straight razors for sharpening, surgical instruments, and so on. So, I just wanted to follow up a little bit, just to clarify, I'm not anti any type of sharpening method. I, I don't really care. I'm sorry. I, I really don't care how you sharpen your tools. Just do it. Have fun. Do it. If it's not giving you the result you want, find something else that's simple, that can. If you're getting the sharpening result you want to a certain level, but you want to take it one step further, well, then you'll need to do a little bit experimenting. And I say go to trade shows, go to schools, take classes, find somebody who's already doing it in your neck of the woods, and try theirs. It's that simple. But that seems to be working okay. I'll show you the edge. It's a little bit different than it was yesterday. Come on, baby. You're loose. There you go. The edge is a little more, little more polished than it was yesterday. And that's off of what I think is a hard Arkansas. There's no name or number on it, so I have no idea. This I've had for 46 years. I used to keep it to polish the edge on my, on my blades. That brings up another question. Someone asked me, why is it that some of the old timers sharpen their blades on an angle to the stone. 
So this would be sharpened like this. Why is that? So I said, well, there's two answers. Number one, sharpening stones were expensive. A two inch wide stone was cheaper than a three inch wide stone. A six inch stone was cheaper than an eight inch stone. A half inch stone was cheaper than a one inch stone. So carpenters had to do what they had to do to get their tools sharp, but they couldn't afford a hundred dollars on a stone. So they would go with something a little narrower and they would skew their blade so that they could get the whole cutting edge polished. That's answer number one. Answer number two is theoretical. In theory, if you are sharpening with a forward stroke, you're creating straight scratches. The scratch pattern is straight against the cutting edge. If you go on an angle, your scratch pattern is whatever that angle is. Some people believe that the angular pattern is actually a sharper cutting edge. Now, every once in a while you'll see somebody come along and they'll do it straight. Why? I think because they think there's no longer a scratch pattern at the edge, it's sharper. I'm not a scientist, but those are the reasons that I have heard. I will go with the first reason that a, sh a person working in wood who needs to sharpen their tool will go with the cheapest stone that they can find because they're trying to make a living and they don't want to spend the money on sharpening stones. It's a, it's a forced necessity. And I do sort of buy the concept or the construct that by skewing the angle, you're getting more of a serrated cut, whereas coming straight on, they're a little more blunt. I'll buy that. There you go. So I hope that helps clarify a little bit of the, the reason why I did the video yesterday. I know it was a bit of fun, but I was being realistic. You need to plane, you need to get wood off. That's a pretty thick shaving. Doesn't matter how you sharpen. It really doesn't matter. Repeat that after me. It really doesn't matter. Just sharpen. It really doesn't matter. It really doesn't matter. It really doesn't matter. Just do it. Hope this was helpful. 
If you found something useful here, give it the old thumbs up. Hopefully it was entertaining. And uh, if you can find your way to helping support the channel, like, subscribe, and share. Share is the biggest one. Share this on your social media. Share this with friends and family. Show them what we're doing here. This is not a forgotten art. This is not a redundant tool. This will live on way past the time we're gone. Head out to your shop. Go make some shavings. Walter out.